so I, uh, want to do a little bit. <laughs> I termed uh, what you want to do. this very short lesson Living Water because it's what God's been talking to me about. Oh gosh, for the last month or so since we came back from South Dakota. So uh, we returned from South Dakota close to a month ago when we went and ministered uh, to the reservations and uh, the big trees there were incredible and our eyes were open to the suffering of a, of a wonderful people and our hearts were broken along the way. Um, so I, I, I didn't find it um, funny that um, I was not, I didn't feel well spiritually or emotionally upon returning. And I thought, well, it's because of the things that we saw and the victories were great, yeah, but the suffering is great. But I, I noticed that uh, as the days progressed that I felt no drive. Um, I didn't feel like, almost like I didn't want to do any. There was very little motivation for anything, anything. And um, I realized I was depressed. And I found myself going through the motions of daily life, uh, just doing things, but not feeling certain things. And this included ministry, where, uh, I mean, as a ministry, we've always, we always, we go through hard things as a, as a tribe, and um, sometimes it will affect us inside. And, uh, but we know that God's commandment is to keep moving forward and pushing forward no matter what. Because he's at the end, he's on the other side all the time. Uh, so I, I forced myself, I pushed myself with ministry obligations and things that I was doing in, in home and in my own life. What transpired in the following days between Father and myself was nothing short of a phenomenal revelation about my identity in Christ. Several months prior, during one of our gatherings of Team and Tribe, I received a word about a name that the angels knew me by, by heaven in, and it was clear water. In the weeks that followed, I pondered on that name, and one day I found myself making a bracelet for myself with the name clear water. For the first few days, it sat on my shelf in my walk-in closet. I didn't feel adequate enough to wear it. I didn't feel worthy to be known as clear water by the angels and much less by God. So I let it remain on the shelf in the closet. Now if you think of the phrases, think of the phrases, because sometimes we go through things in life and if we listen to what we say or our thoughts, they will pinpoint something that's going on in our lives that's causing whatever it is we're going through at that moment in time. Think of the phrases on the shelf and in the closet. I did. I had to in order to get to the root of my discomfort about that name, clear water. Anything left on a shelf speaks of lack of movement, speaks of a stagnation of something. And sometimes we put things on a shelf and we just want to get it out of the way and not bother with it. And the words in the closet speak of hidden places, and much of the time, dark places as well. That is, there is no light. Uh, Maybe things going on that happened in the past, wounds that haven't healed, or something. Something that's been repressed. So, like a good little apostolic Christian that I am, I did the warfare and I asked for prayer. So in the midst of all my searching and constant persisting knocking on Abba's door, he revealed to me that, that spiritual warfare was not my problem. Rather, that there were changes that I was going through. Great healing has come as a result of this revelation because at least I knew I'm not crazy. I'm human. I'm going through things. And that's okay. So uh, what progressed through that was that there was a lot of things that came and went. I mean, I got all these revelations about Moses dividing the rich and a lot of things having to do with water. The water flowing from the throne. Blood and water flowed from the side of Jesus when he was crucified. And I thought about all those things, and there was a, a whole concoction of things going on in my mind with theology and things like that. And I said, God, you got to straighten this out for me because I, you know, what's going on? So the thing is that um, 
that I was astounded that something that could be considered so normal as women go through changes in their lives, in their bodies, that something like that could mimic a spiritual attack. You know, you think about things like that, and, 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 and we, we're friends, we know women that, that go through things like that, but we never think it's, I don't know, if, we, if you don't go through it, you don't know exactly how it, what it feels like. And usually our men partners, our husbands, brothers, friends, or whoever close to us are on the, it, on the other side of that. So I was uh, blessed that my husband loved me with, God, with the love of Christ because I, he's still here with me. <laughs> uh, so not wanting to go to a doctor about this because the medical profession is a wonderful profession. God put it on earth for when we need it. But sometimes not walking with the Lord, they're apt to prescribe medications too readily. And sometimes they give you a med and, and, and then you have to go on another med to counter the, the, the side effect of that med and then you wind up not knowing which is which. So I didn't want to go there. So I found a website that has been a great deal of help to me. Um, but earlier, Earlier that week, while taking a walk in order to clear my mind about some of the things that were going on, I wound up at Dane Street Beach in Beverly. And I sat on a bench on a hill overlooking the ocean. As I struggled with identity crisis coming and going, and sometimes I knew who I was, sometimes I didn't know what I was. Uh, Peter would say to me, this part of you is not who you are, and I would say, well then who am I? That's not who I, who am I? Who am I? You know, I would ask him. Um, and then one day when I was sitting on that bench overlooking uh, Dane Street Beach, I heard Father say, I heard him, if you have two waters side by side, one clear and clean water and one clean and dirty water side by side, which will the thirsty soul reach for? The answer is obvious the clear, clean water, if given a choice, we will always choose the clear, clean water. But if the thirsty soul is in need of water, and there is no clear and clean water, only unclean water or dirty water, eventually the thirsty soul will drink of the dirty and the unclean water. And then his, his or her body will become contaminated, infected, sick, and in some cases even die. So then he posed a question, he said, how are they, humanity, everybody here, humanity, us, we're saved, but he's talking about those that are outside of the circle right now, right? Um, how, what are they to do? How are they to correctly choose, make the right choice, when the only choice before them is a bad choice. How are they to choose correctly? Behold, I have called you into the vineyard, and you, he's talking about us here, within the circle, those of us that have come to know Christ. You know, how, how he's called us into a vineyard for a purpose. And that purpose is that we would offer them living water, side by side. This is living water, this is life without living water. That they would have a choice. A choice has to be given to them that they may choose one or the other. How does creation man know, know to do this? How do they know to choose the right thing? And he says, unless you, speaking about us again, O oh, sent ones, sent ones. Go ye therefore and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That was Jesus sending out the disciples. The message has not changed since then. It is still the same message. And he's still saying, go and make disciples. But he's asking a question. He's saying, how does creation know, creation man, know to do this unless you, O sent ones, go and offer them my living water? How can they see if they are not shown? How can they hear if you do not speak? And then we go to the uh, book of Romans in 10, chapter 10, verses 14 to 17. 
of the message. It says, but how can people call for help if they don't know who to trust? And how can they know who to trust if they haven't heard of the one who can be trusted? And how can they hear if nobody tells them? And how is anyone going to tell them unless someone is sent to do it? And we are the same for this. That's our job. That's our responsibility. And our and our honor. And it's, it's an honor to the Father. It's a privilege. That's why scripture explains, a sight to take your breath away, grand procession of people telling all the good things of God. But not everybody's ready for this. Ready to see and hear and act? Isaiah asked what we all ask at one time or another. Does anyone care, God? Is anyone listening and believing a word of all of this? The point is, before you trust, you have to listen. But unless Christ's word is preached, there is nothing to listen to. From you flow rivers of living water. And again, he's speaking about us. From you flow rivers of living water. Offer my creation man clear, clean, and everlasting drink. John 7.38 in the Amplified says, He who believes in me, that is, he who cleaves and trusts in and relies on me, as the scripture has said, from his innermost being shall flow continuously. It doesn't end. It keeps going and going and going. Springs, rivers of living water. Now, just a little trickle, guys. It's a lot. And he gives us a lot so that we can give out a lot. So the, what I ended up with was, I looked at the bracelet and I thought about it. I said, well, yeah, I like the bracelet. You know? And I played around with it for a little while. Then one day when I was going out for that walk to the beach, I felt like an angel. I saw him in my mind's eye, but I felt almost like the words were coming out from me. And he said, I wasn't doing well that morning. And he said, Wear the bracelet, living water, clear water. So I looked at the bracelet and I put it on. And as I was walking, the Lord said, you must look at it often because you need to remember all my children are clear waters, living waters. And what I have given you, you are to give to others. This bracelet will serve as for something to question People may be curious about it and ask you, and if you don't wear it, you won't have the opportunity to tell them about clear water, clear living water. So uh, I thought about that. We have a, an awesome responsibility as children of God. And it doesn't end until he brings us home. That may be, you know, sooner than later or maybe years and years from now, you know. But we have a responsibility and we need to be doing that. We have to come out of the four walls and, and preach Jesus, talk Jesus, share Jesus, and even hear Jesus. So that's what I have. If anybody wants to share anything, it's fine. Anybody wants to say anything? <laughs>